thought I'd address the Ishmael Adams situation first and foremost. Um, with regards to Ishmael, obviously I can't get into any particulars because it is a pending legal issue. But what I will say is this, is uh, as a football coach, uh, as a parent, you hate to see young men get themselves into bad situations. And uh, one thing that, uh, that I do is I take this very seriously and I take it very, very personally as well. Uh, we consistently as a staff, as a university, um, as a support group, stress the importance of making good decisions to our young men. And uh, we talk about it on a consistent basis. And you hope, you hope with all your heart that it, that it, that it sinks in, but you don't always know. And one thing that, uh, that we stress is from the very first day that they step on this campus as a member of this football program, they have a responsibility not only to themselves, but to their teammates, to their families, to this university, to our great fans, to their student body, uh, to represent the highest ideals and, and uh, moral values. And uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, or really just factually, these young men live uh, in the bright eye of, uh, of the media uh, because of what they do. And when they do make a mistake, it's magnified. And it, uh, it tarnishes their reputation. And it certainly uh, tarnishes, to some extent, the reputation of this program. So we do take it very, very seriously. And um, Ishmael has been suspended indefinitely. He will not play this week against Virginia. As facts become facts, become available, then we'll make our decisions as we go. Um, we're excited about this week, and really our team has done a tremendous job of focusing on what is important to us in the immediate future, and that is playing the Virginia team that's coming in here on Saturday. They gave us uh, an incredible ball game last year in Virginia. It's a physical team. It's a team that, uh, that plays hard. They like to run the ball. You know, they've got six active tight ends, 12 offensive linemen that they use. Last year, as we all know, you know, we got fortunate. We made some plays in the first half that got, got us a little bit of a lead. Uh, our, our offense struggled against a very well-coached and disciplined and hard-nosed defensive team. Um, we struggled up front. Uh, and we're really looking forward to getting out there on Saturday. And, and I think finally, you know, competing against someone other than ourselves. It's been a long, long time since we've been able to get on the field against somebody other than ourselves. And uh, I'm excited to see where we are. You know, I'm excited about our team. I think it's a, uh, a mature team on the football field that has demonstrated the things I've asked them to demonstrate, which is uh, a level of mental toughness and consistency that maybe we've missed around here. I'm hoping those are the things that we start to see uh, at 1235 on Saturday. But. Uh, you don't know, that's why you play the game. It, uh, it's going to obviously be, be interesting to see how our offense reacts with the new quarterback behind center for the first time in three years, and Josh. Um, as I've said, when we announced him as a starter, I'm sure there'll be some, some plays that, you know, you hold your breath a little bit, and there'll some, be some plays that you hold your breath because it's a, wow, did you see him do that? And, uh, you know, the great thing for us, I believe, in Josh's favor is that we've got a really good football team around him. And we can run the ball, and we can play defense, and we've got an experienced offensive line for the first time, and a really good group of receivers, and we play good special teams. So uh, he doesn't have to feel like he has to go out there and do everything on his own. With regards to injuries, uh, we are relatively healthy right now. Um, certainly not having a guy like Simon Goins, uh, you know, you can't discount that. But we anticipate Stephen Manfro being available on Saturday. He's done a lot of work on the side. We, Rest him to individual drills today. Tomorrow he'll do teamwork, and uh, we would use him in an emergency situation on Saturday. Uh, but we want to get him suited up. We want to get him out on the field. We want to get him feeling that game environment so that he's ready to go as uh, as soon as as soon as we need him. So that's it. What's uh, Ish's path back to me? I'm not going to discuss anything other than what I said with Ishmael. I think I was pretty clear about where we stand, and it's right now an indefinite suspension and. You know, as the facts become available, we'll, we'll go from there. What were some of the things Virginia did defensively that were so effective last year? A lot of um, man pressure, a lot of five, six man, single dog pressure with free safety, sometimes peeling when they were rushing six or just rushing five and keeping the safety in the middle. As you recall, last year we started a true freshman at right guard and we had to move Scotty Quisenberry over to center because Jake had the, the calf. Uh, and then they really took advantage of that. You know, they did some really great things inside. They caught a little, a little barrel stunt, a three-man game that gave us a lot of trouble. And um, they had two really good defensive ends. Um, and they pressured us. You know, we just didn't make the plays. So 
you know, you'd hope that with a with a more experienced and consistently, you know, together offensive line, we'd be better up front. Maybe it's a game where the offensive line can really maybe set the tone for the rest of the season. You'd like that to happen. I mean, you know, I've told our team this a lot of times. Is that, in my opinion, the offensive line not only sets the tone but the tempo for our offense. You know, if they can get going and get back up on the ball and go again, you know, that's difficult for a defense, any defense, and. Uh, you know, I would hope, and I, and I, you know, we'll find out where we are right now on Saturday. But you know, I hope that, you know, we've we've developed enough as an offensive line that we can at least show a level of consistency that allows us to move the ball consistently. That doesn't mean we're going to put it in the end zone every single drive or get first downs every single drive. But you know, being able to eliminate penetration and eliminate you know negative plays, that's that's what we're looking for. Coach, a little while ago, you talked about this team getting back a little physical meanness, a little nastiness. How did you lose that, and how do you hope to gain that back? I don't know that we lost it. I think that uh, I thought we regained. Yeah, I thought against Stanford we struggled. You know, we weren't the physical, violent. When I say violent, I don't mean it in a negative tone. I mean it in the tone of football uh, that we would like to be. I felt like when we came back against uh, Kansas State. You know, we were back to that nature, and then I feel like through camp, I mean, there's been a there's been a level, level of physicality and speed and, and violence, football violence that to me has been very encouraging. You know, I think it's it's our guys understanding uh, our schemes, their assignments, being fundamentally sound, where they can just kind of turn it loose and not think as much. And I think that enables them to just kind of reach their level of ability more efficiently. So you want them to play with like a chip on their shoulder? Well, I just want to play fair, uh, but with a level of, of physicality and speed that, you know, that people feel, that people recognize. Uh, you know, that, that hopefully, you know, uh, when you're watching film of us, you know, as your next opponent, you say, boy, those, they, they play physical. They, they play with a little violence. They play with speed. You know, when you're sitting in the stands, you, you know, you go, wow, they, they look pretty physical. You know, that's what we're looking for. And, uh, and hopefully it shows up on Saturday. You know, that first game, there's, <laughs> there's so much that's unknown. And uh, that's why you're anxious and you're nervous and you're also excited. Is it hard to control that aggression in a first game? Is that usually your toughest game? Just because uh, they haven't hit people for a long time other than themselves? You have to be worried about that. You certainly do. You know, because you're right. We haven't uh, played against anybody since, what was it, New Year's Day or whatever. So it's been a long, long time. Uh, I believe, I, f I believe that we've reached a point uh, in our maturity on the football field where uh, we're much more uh, prepared to handle our emotions. We've talked a lot about uh, playing with emotion without becoming too emotional during a game. I think it's no secret that that has been an issue with us in the past. I've tried to make these guys uncomfortable. I've tried to put them in stressful situations. I've tried to, uh, you know, challenge them in, in a lot of different ways to prepare them for a Saturday where they're going to have to keep their cool. And, uh, and hopefully we've made progress in that area. Have you seen Josh respond in a particular way since we came to start? You know, I think one of the things that's impressive about Josh is his consistency of his personality. You know, uh, I think it, it's just who he is and it probably is a lot, you know, in how he was trained by his high school coaches, you know, having a tennis background where uh, you just kind of got to go to the next moment, whether something happens, good or bad. And he's, he's had that level of maturity since I've known him. Uh, so I haven't seen a big difference. You know, I've seen a guy that just kind of is trying to get better every single day and seems to be really unaffected, uh, at least outwardly, by what's happening with him right now. And I think that's a good sign. Now we'll, we'll see on Saturday, you know. We'll see when, when something good or something not so good happens on Saturday, how he reacts. And that will be very telling. How are you going to compensate for the loss of Ishmael? Who will step up, play uh, nickel? Or... You know what, Trace? We've got a lot of good players on this team, and we're, we're pretty deep in the secondary. Um, so we'll move some, you know, we won't move any guys around. We, you know, you always have a, a second group ready. Um, you know, you'll see probably a little bit more of a Darius Pickett in there. You know, Octavius Spencer will get some work. Um, you know, you'll see uh, you know, Fish a little bit. Um, obviously, Marcus Rios and Fabian at starting corners. You know, Randall can play some in the slot, which means Tahan would go in. Jaleel can play in the slot. So, uh, you know, kind of like we always do, you know, we're going to play a good number of players because we've got good players and we think they're capable of making plays. 